So say you had your bitcoins on your phone and you're ready to spend. Where would you go? Well, there are many shops, cafes, services and online stores who accept bitcoin. If you thought it was just for computer geeks, think again. My name is Jenny. Um, this is my little store called Veritad and it's an eclectic little shop. It contains pretty much stuff, as you can see, mm -hmm. but mostly pretty things that I see fit to stock. <laughs> These little things here were the first product that Veritran ever sold to someone who purchased with bitcoins. And since then, I have renamed these products to Bitbunny. <laughs> Our system's also geared up to print up that the receipt to say that you have paid in bitcoin instead of credit or cash or miscellaneous. My name's Gary Passfield, I'm the licensee of the Old Fitzroy Hotel in Woolloomooloo, New South Wales. Um, and I've been here for 15 years and I accept Bitcoin. It will be rare that we don't get somebody inquiring about it weekly. It's amazing the exposure we're getting out of it. It's quicker than an FPOS transaction. Yes, you do need a tablet. But that's your only outlay. Everything is simple from there. And then a little bit of white Belgian chocolate go on top. <laughs> Make it look good. Oh, that is so thick. So people who do come to Sydney from all over the world and want to pay Bitcoin, they check out. Oh, where can I pay Bitcoin? Oh, the outhouse. All right. It's about letting people have another mean of payment. Why do we need the Australian dollars, the American dollars, the euros, the rubles, whatever it is? Uh, for me, it does go back to um, imagine all the people living life in peace, you know, imagine no countries. How they pay for it? It's fine with me. Bitcoin, cash, gold rings, whatever. Apparently the ATO says that it's a commodity, the Bitcoin now. It's not a currency. I don't know how many times I have to accept it a currency, you have to use it a currency until the people at the ATO will agree that it's a currency. But, you know, eventually it will happen. So Tamar is building the flux capacitor at the moment. <laughs> Don't laugh, that sounds cool. <laughs> well, my name's David Brim, I'm CEO and co-founder of Tomcar Australia and here we are in the manufacturing facility of Tomcar in Melbourne. Tomcar is a rough, ready, hardcore machine that you can fix it yourself. And we are peer-to-peer, -peer. we speak directly with our end user. And we name every change after a customer. So there's a sheep station in uh, Western Victoria who wanted an extra grab handle on the driver's side. So that's uh, Deborah and David Bain. So now we've named the grab bar the Bain bar. So you can order the Bain bar now. The high gearing is named after Peter Crombie who has a big uh, cattle station in Longreach. So the Crombie set for the gearbox and there's a number of other things like that. We came across Bitcoin uh, through the Melbourne community. I heard about it and we got interested and we looked into it and then we found out some of our suppliers take it. You know, we had a test with one of our suppliers. We bought some parts 
and we save uh, some money internationally. So we've, we've trialled it now with a number of suppliers and it works and we're still using it. And then we thought, you know, why not take it? Unlike large corporations who have dedicated finance departments, small businesses are often left in a frustrating world to fend for themselves. Even something simple like sending money overseas can take up valuable time and present large fees that nobody can account for. Uh, Latin America, for example, sending money to bank stairs fraught with robbery. I've even lost money, you know, where the bank said it didn't arrive. It's gone through a third party bank. It's gone through an American bank. Uh, to be sent to a bank in Guatemala, for example. You, you, you pretty much always lose 5% uh, if you're dealing with Australian or UK or American banks. I pay over $1,000 every single year between just tiny little frivolous bank fees. And given how much the banks make out of your personal accounts, my personal account, everybody else's credit accounts, there are fees, there are charges, there are interest rates. They make so much money already. They don't have to take any more, but they do. Still, every single day, every month, everybody gets billed. Whereas with Bitcoin, it's money within your hands. You have the power, you have the controlling share of exactly what you hold. And there is no need for banks to take a cut out of that. And they don't have to. Mm. I lose more money out of credit cards than I've ever, ever lost out of um, Bitcoin. And credit cards, people can walk in, and they regularly do walk in, present a credit card with ID, and uh, walk out without paying or doing the transaction. If they don't return to pick up their cards, we've lost that sale. And I've had sales that have been hundreds of dollars that they've walked out on. It's cheaper for them to get a new ID and a new card. Um, but as I said, there's absolutely no problem with Bitcoin. My name's Chris Tay, I'm a pastry chef. Um, this is my shop, Black Star Pastry. We had the first Bitcoin ATM in Sydney, installed here about four months ago. Yes, it's been great. Sixty staff in two shops now. And you, you build a shop, okay, and that's going well. And at some point, you need to kind of think, well, what do I stand for? What is it all about? You go into this for a fairer system, you know. You go into this so you can send money to people who need it without having to go through one, two, or three different middle people. Um, when I get to the end of my life and I say, well, what really was important to me? What I want to say is that because of me, I was able to help a lot of people build their careers, build their families, all that stuff. That's what I want to do. Yeah. Family and future is something often mentioned when talking to people about Bitcoin. People who have studied the history of money and know the fragility of the current financial market often see Bitcoin as a safety net. Okay, so we've you know brought these four children into the world, and we thought their future ought to have been pretty you know squared away, right? But now as they get older, I mean, my our, our daughter, our eldest daughter, is sixteen. You think, what well, you know? Okay, so so how's this going to work for her again? She's going to have to raise how much money before she can afford to um, you know follow mum and dad's footsteps? This is what happens when you create this huge lake of liquidity. That is, that is roaring around the world, you know, desperately searching for yield at all costs. This is what you get, right? And the problem with that is, is that um, people can liquidate pretty damn quickly. Anyone who trades anything will know that you go up a stairway yeah, and you fall off a cliff. So here's this hugely complex over leveraged system. I can't tell you, you know, when that might fall, and it could be something very insignificant, but it doesn't matter. We've baked that into the system, and when that liquidity is removed from the system, it will, go, it will take our breath away. 
Bitcoin is a natural response to 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 that phenomena, right? How do you protect yourself against that? When we had the housing crisis in the US, and you know, and all these people just caught up in this machine and just got spat out, and then all the people who were responsible for it are all getting huge payouts, you know, like these golden handshakes. I mean, like, there's obviously there's no justice. It seems so easy for for people in power to, you know, just make income at the expense of you know people who aren't in that complex instead of us like just sitting there and taking it we have to take matters in our own hands and and do something that's that's outside that whole sphere you know, that's why i thought bitcoin seemed like a really good idea it's a, something that really takes the power away from the big banks and you know big government and puts it in the hands of the people